Hey there, how's it going? Get up here. So this video is not scripted. It's kind of impromptu and it's going to be a bit of a ramble. I, I have to admit. So if follow along with me, it's not set up and I may go off on tangents. I don't even know where I'm going with this, but we're just going to say it anyways. We're just, we're just going to go with it. It's, it's going to be a lot more like my live videos where I'm just kind of going off doing my own thing. But this particular video is about me changing my online game and sort of stepping it up as an online GM uh, due to world events of 2020, which I shall not name specifically, but everyone knows what I'm talking about. Everyone is stuck at home lately and a lot more online games are being played. Now, I have been using Roll20 since it launched, basically. Like when they when it was announced hey this is going to be a thing and i'm like oh this is really cool because like up until that point trying to play online was always a little bit of a frustrating environment it it wasn't easy to do roll 20 was kind of like the og like here you go free service you can play online we got some basic tools for you everything's shared everything's put together and super streamlined super nice uh it was a little you know janky at the time and stuff like that and it still is but definitely worth it and i've been using roll 24 years now since it launched um i have especially this year uh i like i've had subscriptions to it in the past on and off depending on what was happening in my life but of course a lot of my games were in person so i don't need it as much this year of course being this year uh, all my games are online because my group can't get together. So I've had the pro subscription. Now, when um, when I make any sort of relatable inferences between things in this video, I'm going to use U.S. dollars, even though I'm Canadian, just because everyone puts their prices in U.S. dollars in these services. So Roll20 is, for the pro subscription, about 100 bucks a year U.S. Which... <laughs> And that's that's giving you a discount if you pay for the whole year. It's more if you pay monthly. It actually adds up to to more. Like I think it's it's like ten bucks a month. I want to say so. It'd be like one hundred and twenty bucks a year if you're only paying monthly. So if you know you're going to be using it a while and you are going to use Roll Twenty, then yeah, the paying for a whole year up front. I mean, hundred bucks is a hundred bucks. It's it's not horribly expensive, but not greatly cheap either. Now, my current pro subscription is coming up due fairly soon, uh, within the next couple of months, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to continue it, because Roll20, over time, I mean, it's, it's always been janky and shaky and kind of glitchy and stuff, but I, I swear it's getting worse. They just keep adding new features or redoing features without actually fixing the bugs or streamlining it or just like making it work better so it's gotten buggier and buggier with time uh, I'm having a lot of problems some of my players are having a lot of problems weird things like uh, a lot of us have this issue we open a player like PC character sheet or a handout or something like that if we close it in order to open it again we have to reload the entire thing because it won't let us open it a second time uh, there's a lot of other issues as well. Issues with compatibility, issues with performance. It's just not doing great. Now, we've all kind of put up with it before this point because there wasn't a lot of really good competitors. So a few have come out over time and, and things like this, but I'm not too sure. But in recent years, and I've been sort of off and on looking at these, not sure if I want to do it, uh, there are two main competitors that have really come out, Fantasy Grounds and Foundry. Now, Fantasy Grounds, I find, if you're just going to run 5th edition games and you just have, you want ease of use and a nice streamlined game and you don't worry too much about setting things up especially if you're running like pre the pre-written modules and stuff like that fantasy grounds looks pretty enticing my group however a little more advanced than that we do a lot of custom stuff a lot of homebrew stuff we play a lot of different systems 
uh, many of which you're not going to be very compatible with for Fantasy Grounds. Uh, and it looks like a really good system. It just doesn't look like it's good for me. And I have really been stepping up the game on what I want to do with stuff lately. So I, I took a look at Foundry. I'm like, oh, what the hell? Uh, there's a discount thing going on right now. Let's let's go see if I, I can take a look at that. So Foundry is $50 one-time purchase. You're done. You, you buy it one time for 50 bucks. So right there, you're spending half the price of a Roll20 subscription, and you're getting it forever, all updates in the future, as far as I can tell, for free. Uh, frankly, if I... Still, if I'm still using this a couple of years down the road and like it is doing really good for me and they're still offering updates off of that same $50 purchase, I'm just going to buy people copies of this to support them further because they, de they deserve it. It's really good so far. I'm really liking it. So there's there's some pros and cons between the different ones. Honestly, way more pros for Foundry than Roll20 at this point. Not that I'm hating on Roll20. It is, especially if you just want to jump into a free game, you don't care about all the extra bells and whistles, you're just looking for, like, super simple everything, whatever, you just want to jump in, roll some dice, you're done. Basic map, maybe draw some squares or something, not even important map. Roll20 is probably your best bet. You can do Roll20 for free, as long as you're just going base bare bones. And it probably would be your bet, best bet. It's not for me, though, because we are going a little more advanced here, and we, I want some more toys to play with. My group uh, expects certain things from me. I try to be a certain level of a GM. So, Roll20, one of the main benefits it has is it has an easier learning curve. Foundry, there's more to it. It's probably partly because of all the extra tools and the bells and whistles and everything like this. Even on the player side, there's more to it. It looks a little more daunting. Now, once you really get into it and you realize it's, you know, a lot of the same things over and over or just just a slightly different user interface and stuff like this, you realize it's it's not much more of a learning curve. Uh, for the player at least for the gm there's a little bit of a learning curve compared to roll 20 i gotta admit it's not that bad though and there's some things that are easier which i'll get into in just a second here so that's really the only benefit i have of roll 20 over foundry um is, is basically the two benefits easier learning curve and if you want to play for free you can on roll 20 foundry now here we here we are for foundry more stable it doesn't have a lot of the issues i'm having with roll 20 as far as glitchiness is concerned now once again things can change foundry who knows maybe it'll go crappy in the future or maybe roll 20 will actually start to fix their shit. no idea foundry is cheaper in the end 50 dollars in a one-time purchase seems like you're laying down a lot until you realize that's not that bad. Only the GM, like only the GM has to purchase it. If, so if the entire group wants to get together and then just like purchase one account for the group for 50 bucks, you know, say you've got the sta a standard sized group, it's a GM and four players, it's 10 bucks a person. You only need one copy of it. Everyone else just connects for free. Versus the hundred dollars of a year for the Roll Twenty subscription, and even then, if you want all the bells and whistles, you might want some of your some of your players might actually want to also be subscribers at least on the like fifty dollar year subscription level. So like that starts to add up. You start adding everybody together. It's hundreds of dollars a year, and then of course you you could buy all the module stuff and everything on top of it. So Foundry way cheaper in the long run unless you're going for the free thing in which case once again roll 20 you can use absolutely free if you want to go super bare bones foundry another benefit more toys just more things to do in it more flexibility there's so much to do with the what they call modules which are basically like the add-ons or plugins roll 20 in order to do things like this, they have the API system, which is like a separate server that needs to run independent 
of your game, which is kind of weird and janky, and sometimes it crashes and you don't know it, and you got to go in and you can't be in the game to restart it, and all of this other weird stuff. Plus, for to use the API with Roll Twenty, you have to be the pro subscriber, so you have to be the hundred dollars a year um, USD to actually get the API stuff. And then the API is just copying the codes over and. And a lot of times they're not in the list and you've got to like hunt them down on the GitHubs and stuff like this. And oh, it's 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 a mess. The modules in Foundry, pretty much all of the modules are listed in the Foundry interface. You can just click on install module and there's like a search box with hundreds uh, at, the, at this point. I think it's like between like four and five hundred various modules that you can come through you can filter them search through them people have been making lists i'm actually at the end of this video i'm going to go through what i'm using or going to be using for fifth edition game for my modules that i've been combing through and i may even expand upon it in the future it's sort of addictive you know when you play a sandbox game and like rim world or city skylines or something like that you start adding those plugins and you're like whoa so many plugins until of course the game like collapses because you've got like 500 plugins <laughs> it kind of has that same level of addiction uh as long as you don't go too overboard for it it shouldn't be too bad so another big 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 benefit for me for foundry is the world anvil and D, &D beyond interactivity I have recently gotten really big into World Anvil for my campaign planning and building and world building for my campaign setting and everything like this. My Oris Windermere campaign setting, all in the World Anvil stuff. And the fact that you can, through the right, right module, get all of your World Anvil, and Anvil information incorporated into your Foundry campaign players can click on the npc and see the npc that you have written up in world anvil and they can see it either in game or if they want to go to the actual your world anvil site which is like a wiki based site that you make and stuff like that for like interactive maps and whatnot then there's a link that could go there instead you say they pull up an npc and they want to see the picture of the npc and you have it in the world anvil thing because you have it all set up they can just click on it and it shows it in the game it's so good and i just oh and D, D beyond i'm gonna as i go through the modules here i'll explain a little bit more but there's two different ways you can incorporate D, D beyond into the foundry application uh, and honestly since my players a lot of them have the D, D beyond content or i have a lot of the D, D beyond content and in the campaign it's shared so they can have their character sheets there and stuff it is a big deal that it incorporates it this well back and forth i really like this next thing we're going to do is going to, i'm going to go through the modules that i have installed so far i've kind of combed through watched a lot of videos seen a lot of people's lists a couple of modules i tried out didn't like turned off stuff like that but i'm going to go through the modules that i think so far kind of in my core list that i'm going to be sticking with now a lot of these are fifth edition specific so on games like i've got a cypher campaign coming up and stuff like that many of these will actually be turned off for that campaign and that's another nice thing is the a apis can be turned on and off really easy at a whim with a checkbox you reload it and you can do it um campaign specific things like this is it's really nice okay so let's go through the list of modules that i have for the fifth edition game since this is what most of you are going to be using it for anyways so we start with ambient doors by default the only time a door in the map and players can open and close the doors themselves which is really cool by the way the only time a door makes a noise in the map is when you click it and it's locked and it doesn't open well with ambient doors every time they open and close the door there's a open and close sound for the door you can customize the sound you can customize the volume of the sound the players can change the volume of the sound with one of their slider bars for the interactivity volume slider which normally controls the lock sound anyways a lot of customization just for sounds for doors that's pretty neat uh, better rules for 5e this kind of overhauls the D, D 5e system for the roles in in foundry itself by default foundry it's 
I wouldn't say tedious, but there's more clicks than you should have to have when making a roll. You click on the ability, it comes up, it'll roll the d20 with the appropriate modifiers. If you want to do advantage or disadvantage, you got to click on it again in order to actually roll the second time. Then you got to, if it's like a damaging thing, you got to click on the damaging thing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, better rolls for 5e streamlines it and you can just set it up whether it queries you or just always rolls twice and you can just say you know this was advantage or this was normal just take the first roll something like that no auto like auto roll the damage and the crit damage and stuff like this so streamlines it makes it nice and easy and there's lots of options once again i have it personally query me i click on it and it's like do you want advantage disadvantage normal i click on it and then it just does the rest for me the next two i'm going to say together even though they're technically two different modules just because of what they do and that is the beyond 20 companion module and the D, D beyond importer now the beyond 20 companion module also needs a chrome extension to work but basically it does similar things it allows you to incorporate D, &D beyond into your foundry campaigns beyond 20 allows you to actually roll on your DD beyond sheet and for the roles and everything to appear in the foundry campaign the same thing works in roll 20 i we've been using the beyond 20 companion in roll 20 for quite a while now the fact that it also works in foundry is just <laughs> blows my mind so you don't have to import the character. If you don't mind having a second tab open, you can switch back and forth between the game and your character and do all the stuff in d, &D Beyond for all your purchased content and everything. Click it, boom, goes over, rolls in Foundry. d, &D Beyond Importer works slightly differently. Instead, you actually get your d, &D Beyond character and you uh there's another chrome extension you can get for this as well to make it sync a little bit nicer but you can actually import and sync your character into a character sheet in foundry itself this way you don't have to flip back and forth between the different areas you can just have one tab open and you're fine and then from that point on you can sync certain things back and forth like if it's just an adjustment on equipment that you have that's fine you can just click it so it'll just sync the equipment over so you don't have to import the whole character you can just be like oh i just changed you know i removed three arrows okay equipment and then you can add it so that it doesn't sync all the equipment it just say syncs the changes so it's the only thing it syncs at this point is oh you removed three arrows or just adjust the arrows really nice so this way i like incorporating both modules so that the players get a choice whether they want to run it directly from DD beyond or import it from DD beyond and run it in foundry so they have less tabs to deal with next is chat portrait i'm not sure if i'm going to stick with this one but it is kind of neat the fact that in chat you can actually show the little picture of portrait don't know how much more room it's going to take i haven't really played around with it too much yet to be honest i like the idea of it though and you can set the chat portrait to be for the player or as they call it the actor uh, in this or you can have it for the specific character that you have selected which is great for the gm if they have multiple different npcs that they're going through then depending on who you have selected is who you have basically talking with the chat portrait it's really nice combat template cleanup now this one i'm surprised is not part of the default of the game but at the same time i noticed foundry is slowly incorporating a lot of these modules into the defaults of the game there in just in the last few updates there's been several things that were modules that are actually now part of the core game so we may even see this in the future who knows but combat template cleanup basically if you do say a spell like say fireball for example you click fireball you click to do fireball brings up like the dc saves and the damage and everything like that but it also instantly gives you a template for like the what is it 20 foot radius and you can as a player click it down wherever you want and it shows you exactly the radius on the map shows you which squares are affected and then what creatures are in that affected area and whatnot you do your spell you're done by default the template stays there you've got to manually go and delete it and you got to remember to do so and then if you have one of those really forgetful or you know messy players then the template just kind of stays there and you as the gm has to clean it up the combat template cleanup 
helps you with that because it does exactly what it says. It takes the templates during combat and cleans them up so you don't have to worry about it. Otherwise, it can get quite messy with time. Compact D&D Beyond 5e character sheet. Now, the default character sheets in Foundry for 5th edition aren't that bad, actually. I don't mind them. Uh, I'm actually torn which one I would want to use because there's benefits to both. I won't go through it here, but there's benefits to both. But for a lot of my players, they are used to D&D Beyond because a lot of their characters are stored on D&D Beyond. So, for especially for those that are using the D&D Beyond importer and importing their characters over and whatnot, having the D&D Beyond style character sheet in Foundry is probably a good thing. Now, there's two versions of this character sheet you can get in the module filter thing within Foundry. I went with the compact one, so it still looks a bit like the D&D Beyond character sheet, but it's a bit more formatted to properly fit within the Foundry window, especially if for some people that might be using a smaller screen. And I haven't played with it yet, but I noticed that you could technically load it as a player on a mobile device. I loaded it on my tablet. It yelled at me a little bit for the screen resolution, but it did work. I, I don't know how well it works, but I got to I gotta play with it. But this way, you know, more compact, the better. The next three modules, some of which are going to be out of alphabetical order, if I'm even doing this in alphabetical order. But the next three modules I'm putting together because they all do sort of the same theme of things. And that's Cozy Player the furnace and mess now cozy player the furnace and mess are all quality of life utility knife like just a suite of a bunch of things that needed to be refined or fixed within foundry i would consider if you're not going to have any other modules except for some core ones these three are ones you, i think you should put in Cozy Player, The Furnace, and Mess are all really good. Uh, especially Cozy Player adds a lot of quality of life things, both for GMs and players. It's not just for the players, really. But shorts, shortcuts for doing the skills, uh, tool tips when you're doing the targeting, uh, things like you can have passive perceptions, turn order, end turn, um, join initiative, things like this, all in the quick bars for players. They just add extra buttons to make it a way easier so this is less combing through and finding buttons in other places. Just sort of streamlines the interface. The furnace is is a big one. I'm not going to go through the furnace, but it's got a lot of stuff to it. Mess is, to a degree, much the same thing. Just quality of life stuff. Definitely suggest it. Dice, so nice. This is not needed whatsoever. I like it, though. <laughs> by default when you roll dice it just rolls it in the chat thing and you're done dice so nice adds a set of 3d dice that rolls for you i mean because of 2020 and the fact that we're all playing online for many of us that are used to playing in person i gotta say that i kind of miss my click clack math rocks and being able to roll them dice so nice not only gives you 3d dice but lets you customize the hell out of them I have one player that was playing with it last night. He has these like really cool blood chromatic metal dice that he's using. Whereas I'm using what look to be like wood grain dice with sort of worn edges to them and stuff. Like you can really customize it. It's really nice. I think you can even do custom patterns. I'm not sure. I haven't played with that part yet, but it's really neat. Really nice. Okay. Dice tray. I'm surprised this is not part of the core game, considering the game is all about rolling them click clack math rocks, AK dice. Dice tray just adds some nifty little buttons underneath the chat box for quickly rolling dice. You want to roll a d20, just click the d20 and click roll. You want to roll it with advantage, just click the d20 twice, click advantage, roll. Boom. You just and then basically it it in all it's doing is it's importing the commands for you because you can type it in all manually all it's doing is it's buttons that's importing the commands and then you click and then it just executes the command for you makes it super easy you don't even i think the reason they did this is in foundry a lot of times everything is tied in on your character sheets and stuff so they're expecting you to use the macro bar which by the way i haven't mentioned the macro bar which is 
so cool. Like if you've ever played like World of Warcraft or any MMOs or anything, it looks like those. You can even press the number keys to do them quickly if you wanted to. It's really cool. But they kind of expect you to do the macro bar stuff all the time for that. But sometimes you just need to roll a d20 for the sake of a d20 or a d10 or some d6s or something. And you just want to do it quickly without having to type in the command. Dice Tray does that for you. So Dice Tray is definitely another one of the, I would say, must-haves. I'd probably lump it in with the, the three quality of life things. I would definitely add Dice Tray if, if possible. The next one I'm not sure I'm going to use. That is D&D 5e Helpers. And I think that is because I believe a lot of this stuff is already being handled by some of the other modules that I have listed or I'm about to list. So I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it in this list. If if some of the... It's really simple tasks. I'm not sure if I'm going to be keeping it in there. It, it is something to look at if you just need a couple of little extra like wild surge tables or just auto critting rolls and stuff like that. I think a lot of that is already being handled with better rolls for 5e. So take this one with a grain of salt. D&D 5e helpers is one I have in there, but I think I'm probably just going to get rid of it. Dynamic illumination. The lighting system is already really good in Foundry. They apparently in a fairly recent update, I'm not sure how long ago, a few months ago. I don't know. I'm new to this, so it's all the same to me. But they added a lot of things like lights can like flicker like they're on fire, have special effects like if it's a spell effect and things like this. And you can have day night cycles. Dynamic illum illumination expands that even further giving you dawn and dusk cycles to go with the day and night and you can really customize the lighting levels giving it extra tints and light and like a custom like a slider bar for the actual light itself there's a lot of really good things with it uh if you really want to adjust the mood i would definitely say dynamic illumination is for you look at that is a feature that I thought I was going to miss from roll 20 because I noticed it wasn't in Foundry until I found there was a module for it. And that's just simply having all the players' screens focused to where your cursor is. In the roll 20, it is, I believe, shift click to get everyone there. And then look at that. I believe the default key is the letter P. I might change that as the P also seems to minimize and bring up the player stuff or like the player list. So we'll see. But the fact that you can get everyone to focus in a certain area, that's kind of nice. Loot Sheet NPC 5e. Now, I haven't used this yet, but this very concept impresses the hell out of me. Basically, you incorporate... They're called NPCs, but they don't have to be actual NPCs per se. They could be a loot container, such as a chest that they find. And you can have players basically loot the chest themselves. You don't have to grant them the item. They click on it, and it opens up a window with items in it that they can then click and drag to their character sheet, making it so that the players actually get to do the action of looting it themselves, which is really cool. And the other thing it can do, which does actually add an NPC, is it adds shopkeepers, where a player can themselves go up to the shopkeeper, click on the thing, purchase things from the shopkeeper, and then walk away, all without the GM having to do anything except the pre-setup, and just, like, loading the items into the NPC. Whoa! <laughs> That's really good. I really like that. So, Loot Sheet NPC is... It's not a required one. I, I wouldn't put it in my, like, must-have list, but definitely a fun toy. I'm gonna have fun with this one, I think. Quick Rolls... Quicker rolls in the Foundry vir virtual tabletop is just what it says. There's, it just sort of, it does more streamlining onto the roll actions. Some of this kind of layers a little bit with better rolls for 5e, but there's a few extra things that it does on top of it. So it, it is good enough that I'm going to keep it in the list, despite the fact that there's some sort of overlay with the better rolls for 5e anyways. But it does streamline things, and that's when a lot a lot of these are about that I incorporate it. It's about being not new content so much as quality of life stuff. So quick rolls is gonna stay for me, even though it's got some some overlay. Token action HUD. 
This one is definitely nice. It is nice for the players, but it's even nicer for the GM. Basically, when you have a token that you have selected that you're an owner of, it brings up like a little box with all these sub menus that you can hover over that will expand if you hover over them and stuff for like their equipment, their skills, their special abilities, things like this. You don't actually have to open the character sheet. You could just hover your mouse cursor over like the equipment and it'll bring it down to the sword and then you click on the sword and it does a sword attack. Doing this type of thing in Roll20 is beyond a pain in the arse. You in Roll20 have to go in and set up specific token actions and then you have to program the custom token actions and in order to do that you either have to be really good at oh, doing the script yourself or you have to go through and do the action regularly as an example and the thing and then paste it over and then modify it is a pain in the arse uh foundry has a module you plug it in and it works and you're done and <laughs> you don't have to set it up individually for every each and every action or each and every token it, it, well, it's amazing i love it it's amazing oh it's also good next token mold Token mold is a bunch of things that it's not going to be as much in needed for the player. I want to borderline say this is a must have for the GM. However, doing this in roll 20, once again, is a bit of a pain in the ass, but in this, not only is it easier, but you give you way more options. Token mold is for when you're dragging out, say like groups of monsters and stuff like say, I have a bunch of goblins. This can do things like adding incrementing numbers. So goblin one, goblin two, goblin 357, depending on how many goblins you've dragged out or name generation. Uh, you could have it so that if you have NPCs and you don't feel like making names, you can just have like a generic NPC, drag it out and it names it for you. You'd be like, this is, this is Jeremy Crawford. Whoa, I didn't choose that name. It just named it for me. Fucking A. Uh, random adjective prefixes. So say I've got goblin and I didn't feel like incrementing the numbers, although you could do, you could still have the numbers on top of it, but I wanted the adjective on it. So it'd be like angry goblin, calm goblin, bloodthirsty goblin. It's a way to give some flavor to the creatures as you're randomly adding them. And there's like a whole list. I don't know how big the list is, but it's a pretty big list. Uh, I've heard some interesting ones as I've been tinkering around with this. Yeah, you can have it randomly roll the hit points for you if you're pulling it out. If instead of you instead of wanting a set hit point range, you can have the hit point like formula stuff, which is pretty cool. Token configuration on placement, you can do. You can also do things like size scaling, randomization. Say you don't all want all the goblins to be the same size. You can set a target range on sizes and you can have it so that, you know, there's some goblins are bigger than others and it's random. You pull it out and you just have like all these different sized goblins and stuff. That's pretty cool. More basically like separation between the tokens. So the players can be like, I'm going to shoot the little goblin that says he's bloodthirsty goblin, bloodthirsty goblin number three. And you're like, okay, it's that one. And like, and it gives them like a mental image that the little guy is bloodthirsty and he's like, Rah! and it's like, that's just so cool. There's other things they can do as well. And you can, you can turn it on or off individually by the base tokens. So like, if you decide that you've got one area where you want all of the constructs to be different, then you can have the constructs dragged out different, but then in another area, you want to use the same construct, but you want it all, all of them to come out identical. You can just click a little button, turns off whichever part you want. Doesn't even have to turn off the whole thing. You can just be like, I'm just going to turn off random size and configuration, but I'm going to keep on the name generation. And then you can just drag them out and voila, voila. Oh, oh. So I haven't mentioned that each one of these generally has their own settings with all sorts of configurations and stuff. These are all so good. Next, turn marker. Have you ever played games like Baldur's Gate or Divinity Original Sin 2 or, or something like that? Like those computer RPGs where depending on whose turn it is, there's like a little like rotating marker under the character and stuff like that. I always like that. I think it's really cool. Well, turn marker does that. That's what it does. Basically, you can you have options on how fast you want the little marker to rotate. 
Now, the default picture they use to the marker, I don't like it. It's too ornate and it's too meh. Um, I made my own. Maybe I'll put a link to it in the doobly-doo below or something. It's it's a lot more simple, a lot more streamlined. It kind of reminds you a little bit more of the simpler ones used in actual like PC games and stuff like that. Uh, so I would suggest probably replacing it. But the fact that there's an option to replace it w right in the game with whatever you want. Once again, you don't have to know any coding. You don't have to know any programming. You just have to click some buttons. It's all in the user interface. So good. And finally, World Anvil Integration. I, once again, going off on this, I'm using World Anvil to create my campaign setting, to create my campaigns, to create the world, and the fact that I can do all of it in World Anvil, which is super easy for me to type on my computer, on my phone, on my tablet. If I have a, a idea while I'm sitting on the bus and I suddenly want to type it, and I can, and then I sync it with World Anvil afterwards, voila. And then the fact that I can pull it over into the Foundry campaign, and it's it's independent of the campaign on Foundry, so I could run multiple campaigns on Foundry. They're all pulling from the World Anvil stuff, and the players can scroll through them at their leisure, go through, click on the links, and like check out all the bits themselves. Oh, it is astounding the level of DM I'm becoming with this shit. Is absolutely astounding. I can't believe it. So. There's a list of all my modules. There's why I've switched over from Roll20. I just realized I've been rambling on for almost 40 minutes now. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you for following along with me. I am sorry if this was too long, but I have... My mind has been blown at what Foundry has been able to do for me. And hopefully not only did you... Get the pros and cons of each, because I'm not saying Roll20 isn't worth it in some circumstances. Once again, in some circumstances, it's worth it. See the beginning of the video if you want to know what. But hopefully, you've also learned of some of the good modules and setups that I think are good for this. I've seen other channels kind of do like intro bits to Foundry, and they've done a good job. But a lot of them, I notice they don't have the polish on their videos that I think make them nice to watch. Not that this video has polish. I've been rambling for 40 minutes. So a lot of my videos do have a lot more polish to them and they're getting better all the time. So I might do a couple of like super basic videos and just like, if you're a player, here's how you play it. Or here's how to do a couple of very specific things as a GM. I'll try to make them short, like, like five to 10 minute videos, just like, snippets or tidbits to go through just because sometimes you just want to learn how to do one particular thing and you don't want to watch a three hour video to figure out how to do that one particular thing so little videos not always a bad idea but i think that's it for me for now once again check out the other videos i have uh, a lot of things on role playing in general they're not all fifth edition based I'm not a D&D &D channel, I'm, I'm a channel of games, role-playing, some video game stuff as well, mostly role-playing game stuff. Check out the other videos. If you want to support me, check out my Patreon, the link's in the doobly-doo below. And I have all sorts of awesome stuff available as well. If you join the Discord, there's more free stuff being uploaded all the time, extra tokens and images and maps and all sorts of cool shit. Anywho, that is it for me. Thank you for following on the on this rambling journey. It's been pretty good so far. All right. And as always, stay healthy, stay safe, subscribe to me, or you're going to wake up with a disgruntled buffalo on your face. And have a good one, eh?